Are you a gambling addict? Do you have hours of rust sitting in bandit camp on a nice couch in front of a spinny wheel, go clicky clack? Do you find yourself, you know, preparing offerings to the bandit wheel, dropping high qual, dropping metal frags, saying, hey, come on, bandit wheel. I haven't raided anybody, I've been a good guy. I didn't take my, I put my gun away when you said warning. I, you know, I've, I've respected the camp. May I please have some scrap? And then you lose it all every single time. You go up 20 scrap, you go down 50 scrap, you go up three scrap, you lose your stack of 6K. It, it could go either way. You're a degenerate. And here's how you can fix that. The Bandit Wheel and Rust is a roulette style gambling area. You place a wager with scrap, and if the wheel lands on the number you bet on, you're paid out according to the number on the wheel. And the number on the wheel, um, you know, is higher for less frequent colors and is lower for more frequent colors. Like any casino, the Bandit Wheel has a house edge. Meaning, with any bet, statistically, you should lose money. Um, for example, the, the two to one payout has a frequency on the wheel of 12 to 25. The 21 to one payout is only one out of 25. Uh, if you compare the payouts to the frequencies they show up on the wheel, you can determine that there's losing, uh, there's losing returns on any bet. This is the same thing you'll find at, at a roulette table in a casino. They do it this way so that you can gain money, you can lose money, but over time, statistically, you're going to lose money. There are a lot of people out there who think that they have broken the wheel, they think that they've solved some code, that they can get a better return on their investment doing some dumb shit. Uh, there's the patterners, they think, oh, the wheels hit one seven times in a row. It can't be one again. What are the odds that it was eight one times in a row? I'm going to bet on 20 because it has to be. Or the 20 hasn't hit in seven minutes. I'm going to bet on a 20 now. Or actually, if it hits the five and then the one and then the one and then the three and then the one and then the five, it's guaranteed to hit the 20 because that's the pattern on my server and I'm big brained. If you're not big brained, you're dumb. And then there's the bet hedgers. If you look up uh, Rust gambling strategies, all you're going to find besides the pattern flat earthers, it's gonna be people saying, oh, well, I bet half my money on three, half my money on five, and that way I win more often and my wins are, my wins are still pretty good. I think I make money over time, but if you just do the math, you can. You, <laughs> it's easy to see that you're gonna lose money every single time doing this. Over time, you will lose money doing any of these strategies. Combining, poor, combining two things with poor odds is gonna make you win more often, but your wins are gonna be smaller and your losses are going to be way bigger and you're still going to lose money. But I've got good news. The key to breaking the bandit wheel is in two steps. First is the randomness. The spin on the wheel is random. There is an actual random number generator within the code. There are no patterns set into it saying if it lands here, then it has to land here. From any given spin, it can land on any number on the wheel. It could land on the same number again. It could land anywhere. To pattern seer's credit, there is somewhat of a pattern on the wheel where it seems to be more likely to land on the left half of the wheel than the right half of the wheel. And that much is kind of true. And to understand why, we need to look at the code Rust uses for spinning the wheel and for decay. Understanding this code isn't important, but by simulating millions of spins of the wheel, we can record this data and plot it to visualize the distribution of spins from a given spot. You can see here that there is bias to the wheel spin. That is, for any given spin, some spots are more likely to be spun than others. So there is bias to the wheel spin, but we can't bet on which half of the wheel will be spun. We have to bet on individual numbers. And like any roulette wheel, the numbers that you can bet on are spread out across the wheel. You can't effectively really leverage bias in, in the wheel spin. The second key is that the colors on the bandit wheel are spread out, but they're not evenly spread out. There are sections of the wheel which have a higher proportion of certain numbers than other numbers. If you look here, you can see that this half of the wheel has three blues when there's only four on the whole wheel. And this section has both purples on this half of the wheel. And this half of the wheel has one red, the only red. If we combine this with 
the probability distribution of the wheel spin. We can see that we can encompass these sections within the high probability section um, and find areas with higher probabilities to land on a certain number because there are more of that numbers in the high probability section of the wheel. Does this minor edge probability make any bet worth it? Are there spots on the graph where you are statistically likely to win money, where your expected value of betting on a certain color from that position is greater than one? If so, when should you bet on each color? By analyzing these probabilities at a given starting point, we can determine how likely each spot is going to land, then how likely each color is going to land, and then we can compare that probability to the payout to do the same calculation as before to find out the expected returns for betting on that color from that position. Behold, my gift unto you, what this video has been leading up to. This chart shows the probabilities of landing on each color from each section of the wheel, highlighting which returns are positive. Meaning, if you bet on these colors from this position at the wheel, you have edge. The house edge is diminished. The player, the gambler, has an edge. And statistically, they make money by making these bets. This means that if the last spin on the wheel was here, you should bet on red. If the last spin on the wheel was here, you should bet on blue. If the last spin on the wheel was here, you should make a bet. This chart doesn't mean that the spin will end up on that color. It just means that you have a statistically positive expected return. It's a little bit like betting a dollar to win 250 in a coin flip. You know, if you lose, you lose a dollar, but if you win, you get a dollar fifty. So even though you have a 50-50 to lose all of your money, you should still take that bet because you stand to gain more than you stand to lose at that given probability. If we overlay this chart onto the wheel, we now have a reference map for which color to bet on at which position of the wheel. So you, you're you about to bet and gain, you see that this color is on the top under the red ticker, you find that on the map, and then you bet on the corresponding color. Following this guide, you will always be betting on statistically positive outcomes. So you should make money in the long term. So if this is all true, then how much should you bet? I mean, if you yellow all your scrap on red, even if it's in the red section, you know, you can expect a 110% return on that investment, but you're never gonna get exactly 110% return. You're either gonna get a 21 to one return at like a 5.6% chance, or you're gonna get nothing, and you're gonna lose all your money. And that's gonna happen 94.4% of the time. So you need, in order to make scrap in the long term, you need to make small bets over long periods of time. And in order to get exponential growth, in other words, snowball your scrap growth, you need to be betting a percentage of your current holdings every bet. If you bet a consistent amount, then you only make linear gains, and that's not what you want if you have an edge in the casino. I ran millions of simulations and a variety of betting strategies and got these results. If you make small bets here, you can see that you have positive mean outcomes, but the more scrap you bet, the higher percentage of your current scrap holdings that you bet, you end up with more expected returns. Um, but interestingly, if you look at the percent of trials up, that's how many of the trials ended with more money than they started with, and that number decreases the higher you go. The reason for this is that if you're making these high percentage bets, they're riskier. And even in, in the best case, when you have the best expected payout, uh, you're risking a bet that has a 96% chance to fail. And if you're risking 20% of your current holdings, you're probably going to lose money. You decrease the size of your bets and you only do 1% bets. You lose less money at a time, you gain less money, but your stock is less volatile. And over time, you have more consistent growth. The other factor to consider is that um, the longer you bet, the more likely you are to be up betting a small amount. For a 1% bet, you know, it starts out sub 50. Most of the time you're going to end down if you're only betting like 20 times or 50 times. But as you get into the higher numbers, like 500, 1,000, 5,000, you can see that you're breaking the 50% threshold and the longer you bet, the more trials are going to end up and the average gains get insane. So to generate scrap with low risk, you need to make small bets over a lot of spins. 
So in conclusion, should you sit at the bandit wheel for hours and hours, uh, you know, grinding for scrap, if you only have 100 and you're trying to turn it into 200? Probably not. I mean, at that point, you can just run around, break some barrels, run dome, recycle some stuff, and you'll have 100 scrap in no time. Um, this, you know, this strategy really only makes sense for gaining scrap if you have like 50k scrap banked and you're trying to turn it into 60k or something like that, right? Like, you need to have a huge amount of starting capital for this exponential growth to make it more worth it than other than other methods of gaining scrap which are more linear, like looting and raiding and whatnot. If you're starting with a lot of scrap, gambling this way might be an efficient way to increase your stack and, you know, I don't know what you're going to do with 60k scrap, but just meme on some people you know, brag to your friends, whatever. Otherwise, uh, betting with this strategy is on average still favorable, um, but it's essentially random. Like, you're gonna lose some, you're gonna win some, and if you don't do it over a long time, uh, you have almost the same odds as if you weren't using this strategy. So, I don't know, do what you want. At the end of the day, I just wanted to see if there's any way that you can actually make money using the Rust Bandit Wheel. Um, and it turns out that you can but the practicality of actually using this system depends case to case. I think you should always use this chart if you're gambling at the rest wheel. You should never bet on one, you should never bet on three, you should bet on five, tens, and twenties uh, according to this chart. But your mileage may vary whether or not you actually use this to generate insane amounts of scrap. If you're just gambling at the wheel for fun, uh, seeing if you can turn your 50 scrap into a heli, that you can go and fly for three minutes and then crash it, um, do it. Oh. I guess, or M two four nines. That gun is cracked. Yeah. You blow it up. I just heard an explosion. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Well, we had Ellie.